okay, I started recording. I'll edit it later. Just go ahead, ask the question, and we'll try to answer. Okay. Okay. So hi, Eagle. So my question is uh, that anytime I experience that uh, client just focuses on finishing the features quick and dirty. They don't want to focus me on standards or scalability or uh, testing or workflow or even documentation. So uh, clients always think that uh, this clients that uh, these things are a waste of their money and they should only focus on getting the features developed quickly. So how to deal with this uh, situation? Yeah, it's really, it's really typical. I, I, I heard that many times. The problem is that the client is actually paying for development. And yes. when you're trying to sell uh, like unit testing or some quality procedures or some you know, continuous integration, something like that. And the client is basically saying that we don't have the budget for that. So maybe later, maybe next time, just focus yeah. on delivering the code, focus on delivering the product. And the answer is that I think that the customer, the customer must not know all the details. So you should not tell the customer what you're doing. So don't disclose all this information. Don't tell, uh, don't inform the customer that much. And in order to do that, you shouldn't, you shouldn't hide information from the customer. It's not going to be really ethical, but okay. you just have to incorporate all the, the quality procedures into the development. Right? Okay. So let's say, for example, you, you want to write unit tests. So okay. you, shouldn't, you shouldn't write the code first and then the test next. You should write them together. Okay. And when you're planning the development, you should not say that uh, we're going to write 10 classes or we're going to implement five features and then we need that amount of time to cover that with the unit test. You just, you just plan okay. together. You just say, we need uh, twice as much time because this is how much it takes to develop that features. So the customer doesn't need to know that you're using unit tests. For example, let me give you another example. Uh, let's say you want to use uh, some IDE to develop your code in Java, for example. And okay. you're not saying that to the customer. You're not telling the customer that, you know, I need to install the IDE. I need to use that kind of IDE. It's not important yeah, sure. to the customer. You just, you just charge for the results, right? You just say, hey, you're going to see this okay. in that amount of time. That's what I think. And what? If the client is a bit technical, like they know about uh, testing and continuous presentation, and then they, uh, you know, don't want to invest the time. Um, uh, you, you, mean, uh, you mean if they say it again, I didn't understand what you mean exactly. So, I mean, they know uh, they are a bit technical. They are also uh, themselves into IT industry and they know about these things. Uh, I got it. I got it. So they will, they will understand what exactly you're doing, right? Yeah. So in this case, you, well, they, they, they should just, when they work with you, they should know, they should understand that you guys are using that amount of techniques or tools or instruments or best practices in order to develop the code. So that the unit testing is just, is just your instrument. So you cannot just create a piece of code without the unit test because it's difficult for you because you don't know how to do that. Or you cannot organize your work without continuous integration. You just need okay. to continuously integrate your code because otherwise the whole development will fall apart. You just cannot develop it. Or for example, you can say that uh, you need that kind of tools and IDEs and editors in order to develop the code. So it's just, it's just your instruments and just your tools. And this is what they say about quality. The quality has to be incorporated into the product. It shouldn't be something that's side on the product. It shouldn't be something which stays apart from the product. So here's the product and then here's the quality procedure. This is wrong. They should always go together. When you, when you deliver something, it, the quality is already there. So you sh it shouldn't okay. be like that. Like you deliver something and then on top of that, you need something else in order to improve the quality. In that case, if I would be the customer, I would also complain and say like, hey guys, you already gave me the product. I don't need all your quality games on top of that. You know, I just, I just mm -hmm. need the features. And that would be reasonable. I'll give you an example, like quite, you know, funny example. But let's say you're creating the code in Java and you... Okay. And you give like really short one letter names to all your variables and methods and classes like A, okay. B, E, D. That would be like weird, right? Like the code yeah. will look strange, but it will work, right? Yes. So let's, say you, let's say you inform your customer like, hey, we already created the code and, and it works, but all our methods and names, they have one letter names. So now you pay us something else and then we go there and rename them. <laughs> that would be the customer would say like, "Hey guys, you already created the code. 
I don't really care mm -hmm. that you're so stupid so you're doing all your variables in one letter names, but I don't mm -hmm. care. I have the code, so leave it alone. I'm not going to pay you yeah. for going back and renaming that. The same with the unit test. You know, if you already delivered the code and it already works, then it's your fault. It's your problem. You didn't put the tests in there. So now don't mm -hmm. touch it. I mean, I'm not going to pay anything more. Yes. It's logical. Okay. I would say the same being your customer. Like, hey, guys, you already gave me this, the results. I already paid mm -hmm. you for that. So what's the point for me to, you know, to, to pay you something else so you can get back and play with your unit tests or whatever? I don't really need that, that, that features on top of that because, because in that case, the customer will realize that it's basically for you, not for him. Yes. Not for, this com for their company, but it's for, for your fun, for your education, for your, you know, I don't know, self-respect because you love to write unit tests or whatever. But okay. uh, as a customer, you know, he's not going to pay for that. Hmm. That's what I think. Exactly. So, so that's my answer. So you incorporate that. You don't tell the customer about that. If the customer is technically smart enough to understand what you're doing, okay, the customer will understand. But you should not step back and say like, yeah, it's possible not to write unit tests. No, no, no. You always hmm. want to write unit tests. You always want to name your variables and methods in the right way. You do everything right. If the customer says, hey, guys, I don't want to work with the team who writes unit tests. I want to work with the team who doesn't write unit tests. That's, that may happen, but it, I doubt the customer will say that. Mm, yeah, that's it. strange. Like, what, what kind of customer would yeah. it get? If, if the customer sees that you're delivering code together with the test, together with the test, always, they always come together. The customer will mm. not complain. But don't, don't put them aside. Don't say that there are two different mm. things, and you'll be fine. Okay. Great. I say. <laughs> okay, did I answer your question? Yes, yes, perfectly. <laughs> okay, thanks for calling. See you next yeah. time. Bye. Bye-bye.